Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the 2022 annual general meeting of your bank, Carl Bank PLC. I now declare the meeting open and I would like to invite a shareholder to lead us in the opening prayer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Antonio Fori, a shareholder. Please, may we can bow our head. Let us pray. Lovely Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing. As we gather for this meeting, we pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you lead lead our deliberation and this car bank AGM with your spirit of cooperation and enthusiasm. Give it the desire to find ways to excel in our work so that your bank, car bank, may grow in strength for years to come. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would now like to express my gratitude to all of you for taking the time to participate in this meeting. At the time the arrangements for this AGM were concluded earlier in the year, the restrictions on public gatherings were still in force, as a result of which the meeting had to be scheduled as a virtual meeting, as had been the case since the inception of the COVID-19 pandemic. We trust, however, that going forward, it may soon be possible again to hold in-person meetings with you, our lawyer shareholders. For the present, I do hope that you have been able to connect to the live system in order that you can participate in these proceedings. From the information provided by the registrar, we have the requisite quorum to constitute this meeting. Before we start on the formal agenda for the meeting, I would like to introduce to you the members of your board of directors and the company secretary. I am Joseph Rex Mensah, the board set chairman, and present in this auditorium with me are Nana Otu Achempon, Mrs. Helen Nankani, thank you, Mr. Ben Gustav Bath, Mr. Kofi Osafu Mafu, thank you, Miss Rosalind Kenya, thank you, Mr. Richard Akoto. Akutu, I beg your pardon. Dr. Cynthia Forson. Mr. Philip Oviredu, the managing director. Our company secretary, Veritas Advisors Limited, represented by uh, Jojo Aqua, is also present. And um, permit me to go back. One of the directors on the table here with me. Uh, it's Yoku Kosa, Mr. Yoku Kosa. We also have Mr. Solomon Asamoa. Thank you, Mr. Asamoa. Thank you. We have also joining us this morning the Ghana Stock Exchange, represented by Ms. Harriet Bus Moses. You're welcome the Securities and Exchange Commission, represented by Mr. Felix Na and Mr. Michael Sebuava. Thank you. The bank's registrar, Central Securities Depository, represented by Mr. Kwame Bois Amponsim. Yeah. 
who is also the shareholder rights uh, moderator for this meeting. And the bank's external auditor, KPMG, represented by Mr. Labaran Amidu. Thank you, Ms. Amidu. I will now call on the head of investor relations of the bank, Ms. Jifa Amegashi, to take us through the processes for submitting questions and voting at this meeting. Ms. Amegashi. Good morning, everybody. Question and answer session. I'd like to inform all shareholders that this live broadcast has a messaging platform to aid our usual question and answer session. You can participate in the meeting through a chat box, which you will find on the right or bottom side of your broadcast screen. To second a motion or to send a comment or a question, kindly follow the simple steps below. One, type and submit your comments and questions. Two, if you wish to second a motion which has been tabled by the chairman, simply type and submit the word second. Your questions will be received on the message console and forwarded to the chairman by the appointed shareholder rights moderator for this meeting, Mr. Kwame Buamponsem. I will request that you state your questions in a clear and concise manner. To save time, you may submit your written questions in advance. Depending on the volume of questions submitted and due to time constraints for conducting this meeting, it may not be possible to address every single question submitted to the chat box in the course of the meeting. However, the registrar and Cal Investor Relations have set up a joint desk to ensure that as many questions as possible will be addressed either during or after the meeting. Casting of votes. We'll be voting on eight separate ordinary resolutions in this meeting. On pages four and five of the shareholders pack for this annual general meeting, you will find explanatory notes on the resolutions. Please note that the chairman will be referring to two separate documents during the course of this meeting. The first is the 2021 annual report and also the shareholders pack, which I referred to earlier. Voting on each resolution can be done using either of two options. That is the online platform or the USSD short code. The voting options will allow you to cast your vote on each resolution in real time. To participate in the voting exercise by the online platform, kindly locate the vote box at the bottom of your broadcast screen and follow these four easy steps. One, you'll be required to enter the same four character unique token number that you use to join the meeting. Two, click cast your vote. Three, once you've done this, you'll see a list of the resolutions to be voted for. Four, follow the voting by clicking the plus sign and then you can select your vote option. Remember the vote options are three, four, against, or abstain. To participate in the voting exercise via the short code, kindly follow these easy steps. Please dial star 899 star 3 hash on your phone. Star 899 star 3 hash on your phone. And you'll be required to enter the same four character unique token number you use to join this meeting. Once you've done this, you can now select your vote option and press send. As I said earlier, please note that there are three voting options to choose from four against and abstain. You can only vote for a particular resolution once. Once the chairman declares, please start voting now for that particular resolution. And once the chairman declares that voting ends now, you can no longer vote for that particular resolution as voting for that resolution will be closed. Thank you. Thank you, Jifa. I now call on the company secretary, 
to read the notice of meeting, which can be found on page two of the shareholder pack. Notice is hereby given that the annual general meeting of Carl Bank PLC will be held virtually at 10 a.m. on Thursday, the 5th of May 2022, and shall be streamed live to all shareholders of Carl Bank PLC to transact the following business. Number one is to receive and consider the accounts of the bank and the reports of the directors and the external auditors thereon for the year ended December 31st, 2021. The second item on the agenda is to re-elect <coughs> to the board of the bank the following directors retiring by rotation. The first is Ms. Rosalind Nanaimela, Kenya. The second is Mr. Joseph Rexford Mensa, the board chairman. And the third is Mr. Solomon Asamoa. The third order of business is to declare a dividend subject to approval by Bank of Ghana. The fourth item is to approve the remuneration of the directors. And the last order of business for this meeting will be to authorize the directors to fix the fees of the external auditor. The notice is dated the 5th day of April, 2022. It is by order of the board and signed by Veritas Advisors Limited, the company secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, I do not intend to read out in full my statement, which has been published on pages 10, 11, and 12 of the annual report. I seek your permission to take it as read, but I intend to highlight a number of key areas in my presentation. Distinguished shareholders, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I am honored to welcome you to the annual general meeting of Carl Bank PLC for the year ended 31st December 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic that struck in the early months of 2020 continued to have its profound effects felt in 2021 and beyond. Globally, the significant progress has been made in managing the public health crisis with the speed in which vaccines have been developed and deployed, a testament to the remarkable contributions made by medical science. The path to recovery, whilst sanguine, appears long and fraught with some uncertainty. We anticipate that the overall public health and economic effects of the pandemic will continue to be felt for some time. The financial industry hasn't been left unscathed this year from the ripple effects caused by the pervasion of the virus. The group, nevertheless, has leveraged the sheer strength of our prudent financial management and corporate governance activities to continue to deliver positive returns. Ghana's economy remains resilient amid unsurmountable COVID-19-induced challenges. The target uh, challenges with overall GDP growth for 2021 expected to exceed the target of 4.4%. A spike in energy prices globally, combined with supply-side constraints caused by the pandemic's effect on the free movement across borders, resulted in an upward inflation rate of 12.6% at the end of 2021. The Bank of Ghana raised its policy interest rate by 100 basis points to 14.5% in a bid to curtail rising inflationary pressures during the course of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, against an uncertain global recovery and despite fierce competition from both traditional and untraditional sources, 
Carl Bank continued to perform strongly, our performance in 2021 once again demonstrates our ability to deliver substantial, sustained value for our shareholders. The group's profit before tax increased by 18.6% from 284.6 million CDs in 2020 to 337.5 million cities in 2021. With an increase in effective tax rate, profit after tax grew by 4.2% to 222.85 million cities, compared with 213.80 million cities in 2020. Similarly, the group's total assets grew by 26.7% from 7.9 seven, from billion cities in the year 2020 to 10.04 billion cities at the end of the year 2021. The Ghana Stock Exchange recovered from its performance in 2020 to return 43.7% in its GSE Composite Index. The Financial Stocks Index returned 20.7% with majority of banking stocks showing appreciation in share prices. The bank's share price appreciated by 26% to end 2021 at, zero at 87 pesos per share. We are proud of our long track record in creating shareholder value. Our, over recent years, we have simultaneously increased our income, earnings per share, capital ratio, and total dividends paid out. We are optimistic of steady capital appreciation as we continue to improve upon investors' confidence through improved financial performance and consistent engagement of our shareholders. At the end of the year 2021, the group retained a strong capital position, maintaining the minimum capital, paid up capital of 400 million Ghana cities and a regulatory capital of 25.1%. The group's capital adequacy ratio of 25.1% was above the statutory limit of 13%. In line with regulations of the bank, the board is pleased to recommend a dividend per share of 11 pesos, 11 pesos as approved by the Bank of Ghana. As a responsible bank, we have a clear and robust governance in place. This is key for guaranteeing a sustainable business model over the long term. Best practices on governance are channeled to all our subsidiaries. The Carl Bank Board Charter establishes the framework through which our responsibilities are executed and serves as the basis for evaluating our performances. In the year 2021, training, development, and knowledge refreshment programs have been provided for directors to ensure the proper performance of their duties. Evaluation programs were also done for the board members to create the opportunity for us to self-reflect, analyze, and formally review our performance with the objective of improving our effectiveness and seeking further efficient opportunities for the benefit of the bank. The board shall always ensure the group is compliant with any corporate governance directives issued by our regulators and shall be guided by these in the attainment of the group's corporate mission. In accordance with statutory requirements the bank's regulation and the bank's regulations, the following directors, Joseph Rex Mensa, Mr. Solomon Asamoah, and Rosalind Nana Emela Kenya retire by rotation and are eligible for re-election. They have consented to being re-elected and your board fully supports this.
there was no change in the structure of the board of directors. It has been a privilege to represent shareholders and to work with such an exceptional team across the board. We look forward to serving you more this year to achieve and exceed all our strategic objectives. The unfolding local economic challenges regarding the government's urgent need to address the fiscal deficit, revenue generation, rising inflation, interest and exchange rates in the first quarter of 2022, compounded by global economic issues around rising cost of crude oil and increase in interest rates and inflation, there are expected significant headwinds having potential impact on the banking sector. We, however, expect the country to rebound from these emerging trends during the year, coupled with the worst of the pandemic hopefully over due to the availability of vaccines and booster shots. I look forward to reporting a continuation of the bank's strong performance, supported by the continuous effort by management and employees to achieve and exceed the targets set for 2022. I take this opportunity to thank the management team and everyone in the bank for showing determination throughout 2021 in attaining our results. I also thank the board of directors for their ongoing engagement, counsel, and support over the past year through the wealth of knowledge and experience that they have that they bring to the bank. Finally, I want to thank all shareholders and other stakeholders for the confidence that you have placed in us throughout the years. We are profoundly grateful. We count on your continued support to move and go forward together. Um, to ensure smooth movement of the business of the day, I will move each motion and invite seconders for each motion from the floor and online. The seconders I kindly requested to state their names to enable the company secretary to take proper note of the names. As voting will be done electronically, a few minutes will be allowed for each vote to enable participating shareholders to vote and also to allow for the tallying of all votes cast. I will announce the opening and closing of the online voting period for each resolution. So we will now move to the formal business of the meeting. Each of you would have accessed copies of the 2021 accounts of the bank and the report of the directors published on the bank's website and in the daily graphic on 11th April 2022 or through the virtual AGM link shared with you by EMS or SMS. With your permission, I would like to take them as read. The independent auditor's report is found on pages 46 to 49 of the annual report, which has been shared on the bank's website or via the virtual AGM link shared with you by EMS or SMS, by email or SMS. I now call on the representative of KPMG, the bank's external auditor, Mr. Labran Amidu, to read the auditor's report. Mr. Labran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> good morning, and good morning to all members. By way of introduction, my name is Labaran Amidu, representing KPMG. And I'll be reading the auditor's report, which can be found on pages 
46 to 49 of the annual report. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, uh, the report is long, so I will read out relevant sections and some areas uh, we may take as read. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Independent auditors report to the members of Car Bank PLC. Report on the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements. Opinion. We have audited the consolidated and separate financial statements of Car Bank PLC, the group and the bank, which comprise the statements of financial position as at 31st December 2021, and the statements of comprehensive income, changes in equity and cash flows for the year then ended. And the notes to the financial statements, which include a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory notes, are set out on pages 50 to 137. In our opinion, the accompanying consolidated and separate financial statements give a true and fair view of each consolidated and separate financial statement, uh, financial position of the group and, and bank, as at 31st December 2021, and of each consolidated and separate financial performance and consolidated and separate cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards and in the manner required by the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, and the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2016, Act 930. Basis for opinion. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, we may take this as read. And key audit matters, which is the next paragraph, and we may take that as read as well. May I please uh, direct you to page number 48, where I would like to point out the responsibilities of the directors for the consolidated and separate financial statements, and also we, the auditors, our responsibilities for the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements, which can also be found on page 48. And on page 49, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I will read out a uh, report on other legal and regulatory requirements. Compliance with the requirements of Section 137 of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. We have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purpose of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of accounts have been kept to far as appears from our examination of those books. The consolidated and separate statements of financial position and comprehensive income are in agreement of the accompanying records and returns. So of the accounts, my um, I beg my pardon, are in agreement with the accounting records and returns. We are independent of the group and bank and the, pers and the audit pursuant to section 143 of the Companies Act 2019 Act 992. Compliance with the requirement of Section 85 of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2016 Act 930. We have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purpose of our audit. The group and banks transactions were within their powers and the group and banks general complied with the relevant provisions of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2016 Act 930. The group and bank have generally complied with the provisions of the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2020, Act 1044, and Anti-Terrorism -Terror Act 2008, Act 762, and all relevant amendments and regulations. The engagement partner on the audit resulting in the independence auditor's report is my good self, Labaran Amidu, with my license number ICAG stroke P stroke 1472. Signed KPMG for and on behalf of KPMG license number as quoted. Chartered accountants, 13 year word drive, Abeling Pay, Accra, dated 25th February 2022. Mr. Chairman, thank you. This brings me to the end of my auditor's report. Thank you, Mr. Amidu. Um, we now come to the first item on the agenda, which is to lay before the meeting for consideration the accounts of the bank for the financial year ended 31st December 2021 and the reports of the directors and the auditors thereon.
I now lay before you the audited accounts of the bank sent to all shareholders as required by Section 128 of the Companies Act 2019. We will now take questions and comments on the accounts or the reports as laid. Please remember to provide your names and make use of the chat box section at the bottom or right side of your broadcast screen. The floor is open. Mr. Secretary, do we have any questions on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, no questions have been sent through by the shareholder rights moderator. Okay. And I've gotten a signal to indicate that no questions have been received. Okay. So we may proceed to table the resolution to Thank the vote. Thank you. In that case, I will now move that the accounts of the bank for the year ended 31st December 2021 and the reports of the directors and auditors thereon be and are hereby deemed duly considered. Will the member please second this motion? I now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on resolution one now. Participate in the voting exercise on, via the online platform. Kindly locate the vote box at the bottom of your broadcast screen and follow these easy steps. One, please enter the same four-character unique token number you used to join the meeting. Two, click cast your vote. Three, once you have done this, you will see a list of rev resolutions to be voted for. Four, Follow the voting by clicking the plus sign, and then you can select your vote option. To participate in the voting exercise via the short code, kindly follow these easy steps. One, dial star 899 star 3 hash on your phone. Star 899 star 3 hash on your phone. And you'll be required to enter the same four character unique token number you used to join the meeting. Once you have done this, you can now select your vote option and press send. Please note that there are three voting options for, against, and abstain. You can only vote for a particular resolution once the chairman declares, please start voting now for that resolution. And once the chairman declares that voting ends now, you can no longer vote for that particular resolution as voting for that resolution will be closed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amageshi. We're still waiting for the voting to end, please.
voting ends now on resolution resolution one. <coughs> we wait for the tally. Yeah. As you can see on the screen, votes for that's in favor, one twenty six. Votes against zero. Abstention three votes. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. We now come to the second item on the agenda, which is to re-elect directors retiring by rotation. Three of your directors are required to retire by rotation at this meeting in accordance with the requirements of the Companies Act 2019 and the constitution of the bank. They are Ms. Rosalind Kenya, my good self, Joseph Rex Mensa, and Mr. Solomon Asamoah. I am pleased to inform you that the retiring directors offer themselves for re-election. The first director retiring by rotation is Ms. Rosalind Nana Emela Kenya, whose picture currently appears on the screen and whose detailed profile appears on page seven of the 2021 annual report. I hereby move that Ms. Rosalind Nana Emela Kenya, who is retiring by rotation and who, being eligible, has offered herself for re-election in accordance with the Article 78 of the company's constitution and Section 325 of the Companies Act 2019B and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Will the member please second the motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Augustus Mesa. Representing Smith at this meeting, in a second motion. Thank you, Augustus. We will now take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. Secretary, do you have any questions on the motion? Mr. Chairman, I'm waiting for an indication from the shareholder rights moderator. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we are advised that there are no questions on this resolution, so the resolution may be put to a vote. Thank you. I now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on resolution two now.
2014 is still ongoing. Results are in, and four that is in favor, in support of the resolution. We had 127 votes against the resolution, four votes, abstention, one vote. So I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Uh, just permit me to to add that um, I've just been informed that 79 proxies were received. And these are captured in the voting as displayed. So 79 proceeds were received, and these are captured in the voting. Thank you. As the next resolution affects me personally, um, <coughs> I do not intend to be a judge in my own case. So I will request my fellow director, Mr. Yoko Kosa, to conduct the proceedings relating to this resolution. Mr. Kosa. Mr. Chairman, the second director retiring by rotation is Mr. Joseph Rexford Mensa, whose picture appears on the screen and whose detailed profile is on page 7 of the 2021 annual report. I hereby move that Mr. Joseph Rexford Mensa, who is retiring by rotation and who, being eligible, has offered himself for re-election in accordance with Article 78 of the company's constitution and Section 325 of the Companies Act 2019 be and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would a member please second this motion? My name is Antonio Fori, a shareholder. I second the motion. Thank you. We will now take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. Have any questions? Not yet, Mr. Chairman. Uh, however, we're allowing a bit of time due to delays in the streaming feed to allow any questions to come through. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there are no questions on Resolution 3. Thank you very much. I now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on Resolution 3 now.
voting ends now on resolution three. <laughs> so, um, for the motion, we have 136 votes against four votes and one abstention. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Thank you, shareholders. I will now hand the proceedings back to the chairman. Um, we take the final one uh, regarding the uh, re-election of directors. <coughs> The third director retiring by rotation is Mr. Solomon Asamoah, whom you can presently see on your screens and whose detailed profile is on page nine of the annual report 2021. I hereby move that Mr. Solomon Asamoah, who is retiring by rotation and who, being eligible, has offered himself for re-election in accordance with Article 78 of the company's constitution and Section 325 of the Companies Act 2019, B, and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would a member please second this motion? Do we have a seconder? Mr. Chairman, the um, shareholder participating online, Mr. Israel Akumia, has seconded the motion. Thank you. Uh, we will not take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. We are waiting to see if we have received any questions on this motion, please. Chairman, we have a, a question, and it's from an Eric, Mr. Eric Otu, who asks, how long has Solomon served on the board? Yeah. Mr. Secretary, uh, Mr. Samoa, Solomon Asamoah has served on the board for two years. Two years.
Chairman, there are no further questions on this resolution, which may now be put to a vote. Thank you. In that case, I will now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on resolution for now. Voting ends now on resolution four. Um, the votes cast in favor 135, 135 against four, abstention three votes. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Now the next item is the declaration of dividend. Your directors had originally proposed a payment of 14 pesos per share in accordance with the revised dividend payout policy of the bank and sought the Bank of Ghana's approval of the same. The Bank of Ghana, however, yesterday informed the bank that approval had been given for 11 pesos per share. Accordingly, I hereby move that declaration, that their declaration and payment of a final dividend of 11 pesos per share for the year ended 31st December 2021, as approved by the Bank of Ghana, be and is hereby approved. Will the member please second this motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Charles Akwa, a shareholder. Before I second the motion, I will please entreat my fellow shareholders to accept what the regulator has approved for us, the 11 pesos. However, we will still request our board of directors to engage the Bank of Ghana for the difference of three persons. On that note, I second the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akwa. Um, uh, we take note of your, uh, your advice, and let me assure you that uh, we will engage with the Bank of Ghana to see what can be done. Thank you. Uh, we will not take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. 
Mr. Chairman, we have a, a couple of questions related to Resolution 5. Yeah. The first comes from Mr. Karimu Abdul, who says, please, you indicated that the dividend will be 11 pesos, but in our documents, it is 14 pesos. Please, how come this disparity? Uh, <coughs> yes, yeah, good spot. We did indicate originally in our initial communication to shareholders that uh, the declaration was 14 pesos, but that came with a health warning that it was subject to the Bank of Ghana's approval. That's, you know, the way it's, it always has to get the approval of the Bank of Ghana. So yes, the board of the directors approved or recommended uh, 14 pesos per share, but uh, just yesterday, the Bank of Ghana communicated to us that they had done their own stress testing and everything, and they feel that banks should uh, conserve capital, and uh, and so they had slashed it to fourteen pesos, uh, to eleven pesos per share, and they had the they have the authority to do that. So uh, we were we had to just communicate that to shareholders. Thank you, Chairman. Um, another comment, uh, which comes in from Bright Chase, says, please, I think this time around, shareholders were not privy to dividend per share as it used to be. Any reason I got to know of the dividend per share at this very meeting? I believe it's been addressed by the Chairman. Yeah, I mean... Um I we normally it's put in the notice, right? The financial statement and it goes out with a proposed dividend per share. And the shareholder packs were also sent out and that is the that's what we've always done and we follow the same procedure uh, in this this year. So uh, I I'm sorry if you did not uh, receive it, but uh, this is this was done, I can assure you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mbeng and Sami ask, I'd like to know what is Carbank's dividend policy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, uh, historically, we've paid dividend at the rate of uh, 33% uh, of profit after tax. Mm -hmm. uh, the cut, the, the re recommended dividend was going to improve upon that uh, payout ratio. Now what the Bank of Ghana has approved uh, also takes us uh, uh, to a, a payout ratio of 33% uh, of profit after ta tax. So that is what hi hi historically we have paid. Thank you. Um, Theophilus Kumi wants to know the reasons the Bank of Ghana gave for the reduction in the amount approved. Yeah, um, the communication from the Bank of Ghana got to us only yesterday. That's uh, yesterday afternoon, late afternoon when we were meeting. Uh, it was uh, verbal information followed by uh, a written information. All this happened yesterday afternoon, and uh, so we, the detailed explanation was not given. Right? Okay. I think it came to the CEO, so I'll let him take that. He got the communication from the Bank of Ghana. Okay. Uh, so as the chairman is saying, uh, subsequent to obtaining the approval from the central bank, we <coughs> engaged them to be able to get a better understanding, uh, and. Uh, as, as was communicated to the banking sector uh, subsequent to the onset of the COVID pandemic, the central bank indicated that they need to uh, ensure that the, the stability, resilience of the banking sector is maintained. So any approval uh, or any re recommendation of dividend by banks would have to be subjected to an approval by 
the central bank. The central bank would have to go through a process of analyzing uh, what has been pre pre presented to them, carry out a stress test. Uh, I should say that the stress test was done, but the, the indication is more on the global uh, outlook in terms of the challenges that globally we are going through, uh, the local outlook, so if we also lo look at it in terms of the recent challenges that we've had. So the central bank thought that they needed bank to preserve capital to be able to absorb any potential losses should they come up uh, due to the challenges that we have now. So based on that analysis that they did, they then indicated that we can pay a dividend of uh, 11 pesos per share. Mr. K Mr. Chairman, the um, Israel Akumia wants to know whether the difference in dividend recommended by the board and the lower amount approved by BOG uh, can be converted into bonus shares <laughs> for the shareholders. Uh, Mr. Akumia, uh, unfortunately uh, not, uh, because uh, uh, this, number one, has n is not part of the resolutions put to shareholders. Uh, number two, bonus shares uh, technically is also deemed as payment of dividends. So in, 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 in going that route, then that means we'll be violating the uh, uh, approval given by the c central bank. Amos Sechi also wants to know the reasons for the reduction, which I believe has been addressed. But then he says further that you accepted to engage the BOG. When should we expect feedback on that, please? <laughs> uh, we will communicate any feedback that we have uh, to shareholders, please, if any. Adam Akpenyo says, has the intervention of the BOG been subjected to a legal test? For all you know, this could be illegal. The bank has met the legal capital requirements and as long as corporate actions are not illegal, BOG should not intervene. Uh, <laughs> the banks, the banks are regulated by the central bank, and as part of the rules and regulations and laws governing the operations of the bank, includes directives which have been issued by the central bank. Uh, as I indicated earlier, directives were issued to all banks uh, uh, when we, we we had the challenge with the COVID pandemic, and a, a specific directive was issued in uh, 2020 and in 2021, uh, mm -hmm. governing the, the distribution of uh, capital to shareholders. So uh, what has been done is in accordance with the directive as uh, issued by the central bank. So the, the central bank had all the legal uh, powers to, to do this. Mr. Chairman, a few more comments. Um, Samuel Kwekudia says, I think it's unreasonable for Bank of Ghana to give such a directive just hours before an annual general meeting. Is there any justification for this? And uh, let me tack on another comment from Stephen Dodu who says, the BOG statement of disapproval must be made public, and that may suffice. Well, um, we have made it public to our shareholders here. Yeah. So. 
Patrick Akosu says uh, suggests that we can have an extraordinary general meeting to approve a bonus dividend. Yeah, um, Mr. Apasu, you're right, but in that case, that will also be subject to approval by the Bank of Ghana. So whatever we do, we cannot escape that Bank of Ghana uh, <laughs> approval <laughs> that is required, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, Emmanuel Ajake asks, what is the best use for the cash on the company's balance sheet? How does the company plan to raise capital in order to fund future growth? Okay, uh, per requirements of, of the law, we are, we, are, uh, we are supposed to keep uh, some sort of balances with the, uh, se uh, the central uh, bank, which is referred to as the, the, the primary reserve. And we also would have to keep cash for our uh, daily uh, o operations as a bank. So at any point in time, we maintain the optimal balances regarding these two uh, for, for, uh, for, for the proper, uh, purposes of uh, uh, abiding by rules and re 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 regulations and also to carry on our business. Yes. So, Mr. Chairman, my name is Charles Boateng, a shareholder. Mr. Chairman, still on the dividend, I think the Bank of Ghana needs to be um, a bit liberal so that they can also help Ghana Stock Exchange and SEC. Because it appears that what they are paying is the same value we had last year. And that's a principle of time value of money. 11 pesos one year down the line <laughs> is coupled with the current inflation rate. It's, it's, it's more like giving me lesser what I had a year ago. And so let's kindly let them understand the ramifications because you see, these things would lead to the stock market performing badly. And uh, the country needs that to tout ourselves that our markets are doing better, and it, it, it would certainly attract even foreign investors. Yes. So we need to let Bank of Ghana understand the ramifications of such um, regulatory decisions. Otherwise, um, some of us who are young investors and coaching and educating others to join will not have the, mm, the joy of doing such education. And so it's important they, they look at some of these things because our, our GSC is suffering now. And now banks want to pay because they are making good profits. Even t the first quarter of this year of Cal, impressive growth, 25% profit compared to the last year's profit. So everything shows that the bank, irrespective of the uh, heightened uncertainties, has a system running that is still providing as good returns. And so they should look at some of these things vis-a-vis -vis what the <coughs> bank's performance is so that it's not like a blanket um, expectation that are uncertainty. There's Ukraine war, there's inflation, there's dollar ratio, and all of that. So that the stock market, if GSE is here, GSE should also pick it up. It shouldn't be the bank alone. I'm not speaking because of Carl Bank. Across the, 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 the banking spectrum, the, 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 the Bank of Ghana should be a bit liberal so that it would boost, it would boost activity on the GSE and then it would also uh, boost our position on the African ranking. Currently, we are lagging behind and other countries are doing well. So when banks have profits that they can pay and, and even the payout ratio is 40%, so you still have 60% in, in your reserve and in expectation of a heightened uncertainty in law, there's a principle that says that you take your victim as you have it. Um, 
when banks make losses, they will not declare dividends. And that time, me, the shareholder, or shareholders, we lose. And we cannot complain because that is the order of the day. The, there were no profit, or the profits are not enough, and therefore you cannot make it. But when the profits are there, don't tell me that because of A, B, C, I shouldn't get my due. What if tomorrow that situation changes and then there's not going to be a profit? That means you've, you've caused me to be a double loser. And that is what will cause people to move their money from equities into the, the bonds and the treasury bills. Because as investors, we look at return on equity. I have held my money with Carl Bank for years and I cannot see progress. So kindly negotiate, renegotiate with them so that the 3% should come. Even if it will be more, we'll be glad. But to reduce it, no. They should, they should really look at it. And I'm also, to end, con congratulate the board. I think that it's 100% attendance. It, it's not too often to see such 100% attendance in other um, meetings that we see. And, and that gives me an indication from what I saw in the brochure that our board is a very vibrant, active, committed one. Thank you so much. I salute you all. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Watson. I also salute you. You've made some very valid points. And um, I, 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 I commend you and I associate with your, your arguments. Uh, I can assure you that we communicated our feelings uh, and on behalf of our shareholders to the Bank of Ghana. And uh, w whenever we meet them, we get opportunity. We will so present these arguments to them as well as being the, the, the feelings of our shareholders. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a uh, few more comments. Um, uh, International Eno says, if the bank is not in danger, Cal Bank should make a case for the additional three pesos. Inflation is up. We need to help shareholders accommodate the cost of living. Cal Bank should make a case accordingly. And then um, Mr. Daniel Ofori says, is the bank willing to seek a judicial review of the decision? The details of the directives by the BOG was clear and specific. They do not have the legal power. Will the bank join shareholders in challenging this decision? It is imperative that a test case is made on this, on this excess power, and the BOG does not have unlimited power as a regulator. This comes from Daniel Ofori. Yeah, um, thank you, um, Mr. Ofori and, and, and the other colleague. Um, I um, can assure you that uh, we did engage on telephone with the Bank of Ghana, and uh, they were adamant that you know uh, this was an industry-wide exercise that they've undertaken, and it's not Carl, Carl alone. So um, as to judicial review, no, we haven't actually uh, decided on that yet, but I can assure you that our through any further engagements with Bank of Ghana, we shall communicate back to the shareholders. But we haven't... Uh, as yet decided on the judicial review route. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mohammed Sadiq says, I seem to side with the Bank of Ghana because of the high inflation, there's a need to mop up cash in circulation, to control it. And even if the money is given out, inflation would have swallowed it. <laughs> that, thank you, Mr. Sadif. <laughs> Your comment have been noted. <laughs> Yes, um, <coughs> there's a, there's a follow-up from uh, Daniel Ofori who says, will the bank 
join shareholders in a legal action if talks fail? Uh, Mr. Ofori, thank you for uh, being such a strong advocate for Carl Bank. Uh, the, the, the directors will have to, in a meeting, decide on this question of uh, your, your suggestion for joining in a, decision, a judicial review, uh, which, as I said, we haven't decided on that yet, but uh, we would consider that at a meeting of the board later. Alexander Fifi Yangsen says, why should BOG and the governments struggle to manage the economy affect the right of shareholders to get a just return on their investment? A payout ratio of 40% is conservative enough without BOG cutting it down further. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there's a, there's a suggestion that uh, next time the condition of subject to BOG approval should not be communicated. <laughs> <laughs> approval should be sought and included in the annual report we recommend. This come from, comes from investment seeders. Yeah. Uh, uh, noted, please. I investment seeders, we've noted your, your, your comments. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, there are no further questions. Thank you. <coughs> I now put a motion to the meeting. Please start voting on Resolution 5 now. ends now on resolution five. We've got a results in for the motion uh, 120 votes against six and abstention three. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you.
We move to the next item on the agenda, which is the approval of executive and non-executive director's remuneration. These resolutions shall be taken separately. The first resolution shall be in respect of the non-executive director's remuneration, and the second shall be in respect of the managing director's remuneration. I move that in accordance with section 185 of the Companies Act 2019, approval B, and is hereby given for a 44% upward average adjustment in the remuneration of non-executive directors of the bank. Would the member please second this motion? My name is Augustus Mesa, representing Smith at this meeting, and I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mesa. Uh, before we proceed to take questions on this resolution, uh, permit me to invite the managing director to provide some details and background to this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to summarize the key, uh, key findings of uh, a survey which was uh, commissioned by, by the bank uh, to look at uh, within the market in which we operate the comparable uh, fees applicable to non-executive directors for tier one and tier two banks. The survey was commissioned to guide the bank in ensuring that the bank remains competitive, especially given that current board fees have remained unchanged for five years since 2017. The survey found that, number one, Cal Bank currently pays 57% below the average for tier one and tier two banks surveyed within, with respect to the annual gross board fees of both chairperson and directors. Cal Bank is 28% below the average for tier one and tier two banks surveyed for the chairperson board sitting allowance and 39% below average for directors board sitting allowance. Cal Bank pays 69% below the market average for tier one and tier two banks surveyed for the sitting allowance for board committee chairman and 90% below the average paid for board committee members sitting allowance. So that is this, uh, the outcome of the survey that we had. Yeah. You have it? Done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will not take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Owusu asks, why 44%? Yeah. Uh, 44%, uh, as I indicated, uh, on average, uh, if we look at total uh, compensation for non-executive directors, we were about 57% below the average paid to, uh, paid by competitor banks. However, the directors considered that uh, a 44% increase uh, con considering cost associated with this would be a fair uh, increase and then as, as we go along, we will see how best we'll be able to ensure that the bank remains competitive and attract uh, the very best minds to be able to steer the affairs of the bank. Mr. So Chairman, a couple of follow-up, uh, well, one comment and then one question. The comment comes from Daniel Lopari, who says, um, I think the 44% upward adjustment of non-executive director's remuneration is too much. Martin Bruce 
says, B as it may, that Carl pays significantly lower than other banks should the bank not be on a graduated path of increase rather than a single jump and uh, Kwesi forcing us, what is the remuneration package for non-executive directors? Okay, so uh, as I indicated, uh, the, 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 the payment to Cal Bank directors is 57% below the market. So uh, obviously an increase by 44 uh, percent. Uh, the directors in deemed that to be fair, other than moving uh, in, in one jump to the 57 uh, percent, as uh, the survey indicated. Uh, maybe it's in terms of uh, some sort of uh, detail, and these are uh, these are fees which are, are based uh, uh, the CD the CD equivalents of the uh, uh, amounts which were which were surveyed. So in terms of what is being uh, uh, proposed for directors, we are looking at monthly fees. Uh, 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 about 2,515 dollars, the CCD equ equ equivalent of that for the chairperson, uh, board fees, uh, CD uh, equivalent of 1,735 uh, for directors, uh, sitting, sitting uh, 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 allowance of uh, 5,716 uh, for the chairperson, and the uh, uh, committees sitting uh, allowance CD equivalent of 2,719 for chairperson and 3,000 uh, board sitting allowance of 3,529 for directors and for uh, committee members, $1,675. The chairman, a few. Uh, Mr. Watson has a question here. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Charles Button. I think all of our shareholders should also assess what our directors have gone through, given the information we have so that we can be fair and call a speed a speed. Our directors over the last five years have been paid below industry averages. That's unfair. But probably you did it because you, you wanted the bank to, to do better. And over the years, Cal Bank has done best. <coughs> and so, and so I believe that it's time we, we motivate our directors so that with their able leadership and guidance, the bank can soar higher. So I would, I, would, I would suggest that given the industry averages and everything that we have been given, this particular resolution be carried to serve as a motivation and to say thank you to our directors that in the, in the, in the face of COVID, the after effect of COVID, Ukraine and everything, the bank is still be performing excellently well. They need really to be congratulated and to be empowered to do more. So uh, we may think that 44 is a very huge jump I, I was just trying to find out whether it will affect the bottom line. That was where I had a question. My, my thinking was, if you give them 44%, what will be the effect on the profitability of the company? And my understanding was that it's even less than 1% of our profits. And I think that if with all this hard work, they are giving less than 1% of the profit of the company, it should it should be a good news to we, the shareholders. They are not milking us out. 
we need to encourage them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Boatin. Okay, Mr. Chairman, a few more comments uh, have come in. Um, Madam Owusu is back and wants to know um, whether a survey was done to arrive at the dividend amount and why a survey was done for the remuneration of the executives but not on dividends. Uh, Philip Ofori says the board deserves the amount and I would have no issues with it if shareholders' dividend were not reduced. Thus, the percentage should be adjusted to be the same as that of the percentage being received by shareholders. Uh, Martin Bruce says, it's also back again with another comment. Comparatively, did the survey consider the average revenue and profitability growth across the tier one and two banks juxtaposed against dividend payments to properly situate and contextualize director's fees. Uh, Daniel Opari wants to know whether the adjustment of non-executive director remuneration is also subject to BOG approval. <laughs> uh, George Opoku thinks the increment is high and should be reduced to 30%. Kwesi Fortin says, can we have access to the survey for review? And International Eno is also back. And she says, directors must be compensated competitively. The charge is on Ross. Yes, uh, you answered that before Mr. Aqua then comes in. Okay, uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman and uh, shareholders. Thanks very much uh, for the questions and comments. Uh, but I would like to just uh, s uh, summarize it in terms of what went into the the the, the decision. I, as I've said, the survey was done. In that survey, we did con consider uh, competitors are uh, in, in, uh, in terms of our peers, uh, and based on that. That is how come we, we came out with this recommendation. We looked at uh, in terms of performance of the various banks, and I think Cal Bank has been also quite uh, uh, performing uh, above our, our average if you take these banks that we compared uh, ourselves with. In terms of the survey for dividends, uh, we did carry out the survey and looked at what sort of uh, dividend yields that uh, the various listed banks uh, uh, and we, 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 we realized that we were just about average. So that was why uh, in terms of recommending dividends for this year, the directors decided that they were going to go uh, above the 33% per per that we, 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 we recently had. This, uh, if, 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 if the, the 0 0.14 had been uh, approved, we would have had a, a yield uh, about 18.6 percent, which would have been above the average yield for a, a one-year uh, note paper. But be, uh, be as it may, this is the approval that we, we have. So as has been said, we would consult with the central banks and some more so that subsequently we would ensure that we, we have a payout ratio which would be uh, acceptable to shareholders. Thank you. Is there? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman. My name is Charles Aqua, shareholder. As a matter of fact, if you look at how much uh, the board has recommended, that the 44%, I'm of the opinion that it should have even been equal to what pertains within our competitor banks, that's the 56%. Um, so if the board, in its wisdom, looking at the bottom line of the bank has recommended uh, 44%. And since this is not going to affect us, the shareholders, I think I will just appeal to my colleague shareholders that we should accept it so that the directors are also well motivated to do what they are doing. 
In fact, when I got the um, annual report, the first thing I always do when I get an annual report is to go through the attendance of our board members at board sittings and at committee meetings. And if you go through, you could see that all of them have scored six over six. Some, you know, it shows that all of them are very, very committed. Anytime there's a board meeting, they do well to attend. And there are no excuses. If you go to other uh, financial institutions, you, 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 you don't normally find such performance coming from the board members. So it shows how committed our board members are. So if the, in their wisdom they've recommended the 44, which is still below what pertains in the market as compared to uh, uh, our competitor banks, uh, please let's give them the go ahead to give them that rise of 44% so that they will be more motivated, more committed, and do the work that we have entrusted to them. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Aqua, uh, appreciate it. Um, I now put a motion to the meeting. Uh, uh, please, Mr. pardon? Mr. Chairman, there, there are a few more uh, comments. Maybe let's take a final round of okay. them, and then yeah. we can, we can proceed ahead. to the vote. Yes. Okay. So, um, Adam Akpenyo says, I suggest that in order for this not to recur, a formula should be put in place for annual adjustment. Uh, Emmanuel Ajake says, the CD equivalent of the amount mentioned a, a moment ago, is it per month or by annual? Emmanuel Kwashi says, I think the proposal is quite reasonable to serve as an impetus to steer the bank to achieve more. Patrick Akosu wants the... Um, directors to fight for shareholders' interest by lobbying and engaging Bank of Ghana. Kwesi Forsen suggests that uh, we set the director's fees and charges in such a manner to include a mix of shares and liquid cash. Mm -hmm. And um, Amos Sechi says, may I know why the MD called out the remuneration in USD instead of Ghana see this as the dividend was. Okay, uh, so uh, in summary, the fees called out in terms, uh, in terms of the sitting allowance, they are paid for. Uh, they are paid for when meetings are uh, are held. Uh, in terms of the fees, these are monthly fees uh, that are paid uh, for retaining the members on the board. Uh, I, I think a uh, dividend quotes in USD uh, uh, might be quite a challenge, let me say. some clarity to it. So the board sits uh, on a quarterly basis. Thank you. Um, I will now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on resolution 6 now.
Yeah, I can see the tally on the screen. In support of the motion, we have 105 votes against 16 votes. Abstention, 5 votes. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Moving on to the next resolution, that's resolution seven. I move that in ac accordance with section 185 of the Companies Act 2019, approval be and is hereby given for a four year contract renewal and for the remuneration for the managing director, Mr. Philip Oredu, for 2022 in accordance with his renewed contract and for a 5% increase, 5% increase in his basic salary and an 8% increase in his uh, allowances for 2022 and thereafter an annual increase in allowances up to the annual CD inflation rate for the previous year as approved by the board of directors. Will the member please second this motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Charles Aqua, a shareholder. I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Aqua. Before, um, yeah. um, we will now take questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. still waiting for questions on the resolution uh, seven uh, in respect of the uh, managing director's contract renewal and his emoluments. Okay, let's wait. Chairman um, uh, Eric Otu wants to know how long the contract is for, um, which I believe has been addressed in the resolution as being for four years. That's correct. And he also wants to know what the terms of the contract are. Also, uh, just to tack on to that, um, investments he does as well as a 5% increase is on uh, dollar or Ghana CD basis. The 5% the increase over the four years is on dollar basis. Uh, it's the allowances that are apply we apply the 8% increase uh, and then inflationary rate So over the whole four years, the 5% will stay. It's not 5% every year, for avoidance of doubt. It's 5% throughout the four years. And uh, Patrick Akosu says, how many years has Mr. Redu been the managing director? Isn't there any 
uh, equally competent person to take over. You have been for one. Mr. Oyedu, uh, Mr. Afasu, uh, Mr. Oyedu has been the managing director for only two years, and you can see from the results that he's doing a good job. That is why we he, he, we have proposed <laughs> initially a 40% payout. You know, so he's uh, taking good care of your investments and doing a good job. He's been for two years, and I think that with these four years, this will be the last time, right? Last period, right? Uh, four years, the additional four years. He has additional four years, yeah. And mm. uh, yeah, in Bank of Ghana, uh, according to the uh, corporate governance directive, it's um, two terms of uh, four years, three terms of four years, so twelve years um, that he can he can he can stay. After that, it's over. Yeah, it's game over. After that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, um, Emmanuel. Uh, Jackie says, can we get the actual figures quoted in CDs or dollars instead of just percentages? And uh, International Eno says, good remuneration is a good incentive. Let's compensate the MD accordingly. Yeah. Um, he wanted the actual figures, right? That, was that the question? Yes, yes. In cities? No, in what dollars. he said was uh, quoted in, uh, could we get the actual figures quoted in cities or dollars instead of just percentages? Okay, they proposed 5% increase in basic monthly salary. Uh, it uh, would give him uh, 33,484.71 uh, dollars. And there will be no further increase in basic salary until the expiration of the managing director's current contract in 2025. Yes, this is gross. Yes, Mr. Akwa, this is gross. So we increase it to 33,484. And until 2025, you know, there will be no more increase in it. That is the proposal. Um. Mohammed Sadiq says, uh, so Bank of Ghana didn't see the need to review the director's remuneration and allowances, <laughs> but stooped low and did that for the poor shareholders. Uh, investment Cedar says, thank you. Going forward, let's think Ghana CDs and not US dollars if we are to respect and honor our currency. Thank you. Any more? Do you have any more questions? Uh, no, no further questions on this resolution, okay. Mr. Chairman. Okay. In that case, um, I will now put a motion to the meeting. Please start voting on resolution seven now.
well, in support of the motion, 117 votes. Against the motion, we have four votes. Abstention, two votes. I hereby declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Now, we come to the auditor's remuneration. Section 141 of the Companies Act requires that the auditor's remuneration be fixed by the company in general meeting or in such manner as the company in general meeting may determine. I therefore move that the directors be and I hereby authorized to fix the remuneration of the external auditor, KPMG, in respect of the financial year ending December 31st, 2022. Would the member please second this motion? Thank you, Mr. Ashon. We will now take any questions on this resolution submitted through the online platform. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, a question has just come through from the moderator. From uh, The question is from Benjamin Gogo, who wants to know how much the auditors uh, get being paid now. Yeah, the auditors, KPMG, uh, their fees um, are stated in note 16, page 109, is 670,000 for the group, that's 670,000 cities for the group for 2021, the year 2021. Any more? Chairman, Investment Cedars says uh, clarification will be useful. Our directors to recommend to shareholders to approve or they approve themselves. Okay, Mr. Chairman, if I can take this one. Um, I think the as as the chairman stated in his uh, introduction, the the act requires that the auditors' remuneration shall be fixed by the shareholders in general meeting or in such manner as the company in general meeting may determine. And so, what the directors are asking for is approval to undertake the exercise of negotiating and fixing the fees with the auditors. So that is the approval that's being sought from the shareholders. Mr. Chairman, I'm advised there are no more questions on Thank you. this resolution, so we may be put to a vote. In that case, I will now put the motion to the meeting. Please start voting on Resolution 8 now.
the, the tally is uh, votes in favor 111 votes against the motion three votes abstention zero I hereby declare the motion duly carried thank you we have now concluded the business of this annual general meeting before I close the meeting I would like to thank you all on behalf of the board for joining online and actively participating to ensure a successful annual general meeting and also for your continued support for Carl Bank, your bank. May I now call on a member to give us a closing prayer. Please, may we kindly stand on our feet. Shall we pray? Dear God, as we conclude this meeting, we want to express our gratitude to you for a successful AGM. We leave this meeting knowing that you are on car bank side. We choose to put our confidence in you as members of Car Bank, members of Car Bank family, we lift our eyes to you, Lord, because our help comes from you. Help us to walk in your ways, that we may not give room for the enemy to take control of our bank, nor our lives. Please protect us as we go back to our various destinations. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. May the saints say amen. God bless you. Thank you. I now do Don't forget the balloons, Check. the DJ, Check. and the drinks. Listen, honey, I've got this party under control, okay? Daddy, <laughs> don't forget our birthday cake with the sparkly candles. Daddy, are you there? The parties are 4 p.m., honey. Don't be late. <laughs> With the all new CowPay on the CowBank app and website, you don't have to worry about carrying cash. Just place your order with your favorite merchant and pay with a Visa or MasterCard, mobile money or CowBank account, or scan and pay. Visit the Play Store or App Store and download the CowBank app today. CowBank app. Forget to cash. CowBank. Forward. Together.